This video is brought to you by Grammarly. This video is a true story. For tens of years, humans have been trying to run a mile in under four minutes. So many runners tried to break that record and none of them could. Everyone thought it was impossible. Until one day in 1954, one guy with no proper training ran so fast that he finished a mile in 3 minutes and 59 seconds. One second shorter than 4 minutes. He became the first person in the world to do so. Yes! Now, you may find that interesting, yes! but what happened after was way more interesting. Yeah! Immediately after, people realized that running a four-minute mile is not that impossible. So, they ran faster and faster and faster, and in no time, thousands of people could run a mile in under four minutes. In fact, some could run it in three minutes and 43 seconds. 17 seconds shorter than what used to be impossible. Now, you may think this video is about sports, but it's really not. This is about role models, because they are more important than we think. See, the minute someone breaks the impossible, our mental block is gone. And we tell ourselves, if they can, then we can. It's no longer impossible. And this isn't just sports. I saw this everywhere around the world. When Isaiah in Compton, Los Angeles Hi, I'm Isaiah and I'm a 17-year-old pilot became the youngest African-American pilot to fly around the United States he made the kids in his neighborhood believe that they too can fly and become pilots for them, skies became the limits, literally <laughs> Even here at NAS Daily when these videos succeeded on Facebook, many people realized that they too can make videos and now they have millions of followers. After learning about the 4 minute mile, I fully understood how important role models are. Bad role models can ruin us and set a bad example. Good role models can change our lives. That's why it's important to have a successful black president. It's important to have a woman astronaut. Because for every win, thousands more are created. See you next week! What's up guys, Lorena here from the NAS Daily Team. Before I joined NAS Daily, I used to be a freelance filmmaker in Mexico. Everyone thinks being a freelancer is great. You work on your own time, you're your own boss, but that's not really the case. It is hard because you're doing the thing you love, which is making videos, but you're also doing other things like talking to clients, managing crews, handling finances, and it's really hectic. And it eats up a lot of your time. Thankfully, I had Grammarly by my side. It's a cool new digital writing assistant that keeps you productive and helps you save time. Grammarly is free to download on your desktop and comes with lots of free tools. Whenever I had to write an email pitch to a potential client for a project or just talk to an existing one, I use Grammarly's free tone detector to make sure I sound super professional and experienced. And because I love Grammarly's features so much, I even got the premium version. In the premium versions, I got tools like Grammarly's clarity suggestions, which help me keep my emails with clients and colleagues crisp and to the point. It made not just my life easier, but the people around me. The premium version even has other tools like vocabulary suggestions, which helps me save time by finding the perfect words to use in your email. Even now, in my job as the head of video at NAS Academy, I still use Grammarly's tools to keep my videos short and to the point. And now you can also save more time in your life. Go to grammarly.com slash nasdaily to sign up for a free account. And if you'd like to get some extra features, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to help you save time and work more efficiently. And now, back to the video. You're going to get killed. This isn't a threat. This is an Instagram message that I got to warn me. Because last week I decided to visit the most dangerous region in the world. Central America. When it comes to labels, this area has a lot of them. 
Take Honduras, for example. People call this country the world's most dangerous country. The airport, the second most dangerous airport. The city, the homicide city. And because of labels, not many tourists come here. The airports are not the busiest and the beaches are quiet. This is the label trap. We assign negative labels to other places and these labels stick for years and decades even when things improve. If you look at the statistics, you'll see that Honduras crime rate, no matter how high, has been on the decline 26% in the last year and I bet you didn't hear that in the news. The crime rate has been cut in half. This is real, tangible improvement here and around the world. Objectively, this place is not the world's most dangerous country. How many times have you been mugged? One in Honduras. One? Just one. In how many years? In 39 years. In 39 Perfect. years? Yes. In 39 years? Yes. One here in Honduras and two in the States. Crime does exist in Latin America. This is a fact and you must be careful here. But it's mostly gang related, not tourist related. This is why this video is important because places like Honduras have a lot to offer beyond the labels. Take their cities for example. Just a simple 20 minute drive from the capital, you come to a place where every wall is a piece of art that makes a great Instagram. This is the Instagram capital. Like the unique food of Baleadas, like the world class coffee export and world class islands. Negative labels not only hurt me and you, they hurt entire countries. They hurt this person and this person who live off of tourism. So forget the labels and come visit. Come visit. Come visit. Your country has labels too. Most dangerous country. Almost safe country. The one thing for sure is that most labels are wrong. See you next week. My girlfriend and I are having fun. Hi, let's play a game. I'm going to whisper one thing to my friend. My girlfriend. And my friend is going to do his best to pass the same message forward one by one to reach everyone in this human chain. But by the end of it, something crazy happens. My original whisper changes. Oh my gosh, your girlfriend cheated on you? This is the telephone game. It's a game that shows you exactly how gossip works, where anything you say to anyone will be modified. You say something to a friend, but your friend will say it differently because of human error. They're about to break up. Really? Human bias. His girlfriend left him. Or because of human lies. His girlfriend cheated on And in no time, the fake message will spread around like wildfire and will lose its accuracy. My girlfriend and I are having problems. The telephone game is just a game for kids, but the idea behind it is very important. For example, at work. In the NAS daily team, Aegon wants something. Aline understands something else and asks Franco for something entirely different. And before you know it, Nobody knows who does what. At home, traditions are passed from one generation to another verbally. How to cook, how to marry, how to live. But with each passing generation, we forget that things get distorted. So our grandparents might not have said exactly what we think they said. And even religion. If you look at this objectively, religious texts were passed around from generation to generation for thousands of years and were translated to 200 different languages to billions of people. If these guys couldn't keep one sentence accurate in a 10 minute game, 
then how can religion? This isn't to say religion is false. This isn't to say your friends are liars. This is to say that humans are humans and they make mistakes. We can't live our lives based on a he said, she said, based on gossip or based on 2,000 year old words because more often than not, the original words oh have changed. Gosh, your girlfriend cheated on you? And the closer we get to the original source, the closer we get to the truth. See you next week! Your girlfriend cheated on you! Girlfriend cheated on you! Cheated on you! Oh my gosh! What I'm about to say will anger some people. Because you can't learn how to swim without jumping in the deep end of the pool. Let me explain. Most people who want to learn how to swim or learn anything new, they enter the water step by step. They go in slowly, they ask questions, they hesitate, and by the time they're halfway there, they quit. Two years ago, I did not know how to use a camera, but I wanted to learn. So instead of going to film school for two years, ask questions and hesitate, I bought this camera and made terrible videos every day with it. And after hundreds of days, I became an expert at this. At this. At this. At this. At this. I jumped from the deep end of the pool even if I hesitated in the beginning. This experience has taught me to become an expert at anything, you have to go all in. Trust me, you'll come out from the shallow end knowing how to swim and how to win. That's one minute. See you tomorrow.